start the service. Hey. The word Hosanna means literally means God saves, hey, or God heals. The word for heal and save is the same in, in Greek. God heals. So Hosanna. Wonderful. Beloved of Christ, good morning. Good morning. And welcome in the name of the Lord to the house of the Lord. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Pilgrim Saints of Westdale United Church, it's wonderful to see your beautiful shiny faces as we gather in the Spirit of the Lord. What a privilege it is to be here with you today as we begin our Lenten uh, journey through Holy Week, as we begin our this holiest of all weeks in the church calendar as we make our way towards Easter. I welcome you to this home of grace, this meeting place in prayer and song. I welcome you to this house of peace where love and faith hold hands. Happy Sabbath, beloved of Christ. Come as you are to this sacred place as we weave our prayers, our songs and stories into this Sabbath time. Humble and riding on a donkey, we greet the one in whose name we gather. Acclaimed by crowds and caroled by children, his blessing is stitched into the seams of the cloaks that line the road. His blessing is etched into the branches that trace the path. Something is rising, a joy that cannot be silenced, cannot be turned back, cannot be made to still its voice, cannot cease to sing its praise of the one who comes along the way he makes. Blessed is the one who comes to us by the way of love, poured out with abandon. Blessed is the one who walks toward us by the way of grace that holds us fast. Blessed is the one who calls us to follow in the path of joy. He is giving majesty a new face. He is giving those who long for redemption a new song to sing. For love rises up and calls us each by name. So with them, with heart and voice, we shout Hosanna. We light our Christ candle today to symbolize the gift of a new day of grace. I invite you to join with me. Glory to the Creator. Glory to the Spirit. We are standing on our holy ground. You give us this day full of hope and promise. We break our palms and sing our praises. We stand in the crowd and welcome you. We wait for your arrival to start us in grace. Humble in power and gentle in strength. God of hope, meet us here. May the love of Christ shine brightly. Spreading warmth and light. In this congregation. Shut up, 
spread out your coats. Shout Hosanna. Peace in heaven. Shout Hosanna. Glory in highest heaven. Shout Hosanna. Hey. <coughs> now let's open our hearts to the Spirit. Let us pray. Gentle Spirit, glorious and graceful, calling our names, bidding us welcome. Into the wonder of this new day we gather, into your love and your grace we gather, and we pause to praise, and we pause in wonder, we listen to learn of your mountain glory within us. Welcoming God, wake us up to the grace of this new day, awaken our hearts with your gospel song. Amazing God, light up our thoughts, our lives with the wonder of your call and your faith in us. For we ask not for what we want, but for what you know we need. Let your love soak into the spirit. As we worship, make yourself known to us. Sweep through this holy place, the breath of God. God of spring, astounding God. Life's spark is lit by the spirit of your love. So we meet you in this sacred place of hope and faith and mission. <coughs> risen Christ, risen friends, stand among us. Holy Spirit, the light of our journey, shine in us. Arise within us, holy mystery, holy friend. God of splendor, God of glory, you who lit the stars above. Lantern, great of grace, shine among us. And show us this day the light that shines in every person. For all this we pray in Jesus' name, whose voice is our strength, and whose breath is the spirit of peace. Amen. <coughs> Would you lift up your voices and join in singing, He Came Riding on a Donkey. <laughs>
join me in the prayer of illumination. <coughs> in the beginning was the Word. Your Word is light to our feet and light to our paths. We thank you for the gift in your Word, the love that is steadfast. pray our hearing of your word this day. Resurrected by love and empowered by the Spirit. Unfold your grace in all our living. Who revealed your glory, we pray. readings this morning. First scripture reading is from the letters of St. Paul to Philippians, chapter 2, verses 11 to, or 5 to 11, excuse me. Uh, it can be found in the large Bibles, page 1430. And think the same way that Jesus, Christ Jesus thought. Christ was truly God, but he did not try to remain equal with God. He gave up everything and became a slave when he became like one of us. Christ was humble. He obeyed God and even died on a cross. Then God gave Christ the highest place and honored his name above all others. So at the name of Jesus, everyone will bow down, those in heaven on earth and under the earth. And to the glory of God the Father, everyone will openly agree, Jesus Christ is Lord. The word of the Lord. The Gospel reading is from St. Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 to 11, which can be found in the large Bibles on page 1171. Jesus enters Jerusalem. When Jesus and his disciples came near Jerusalem, he went to Bethpage and on the Mount of Olives and sent two of them on ahead. He told them, Go to the next village, where you will at once find a donkey and her colt. Untie the two donkeys and bring them to me. If anyone asks why you are doing that, just say, the Lord needs them. Right away, he will let you have the donkeys. So God's promise came true, just as the prophet had said. Announce to the people of Jerusalem, your king is coming to you. He is humble and rides on a donkey. He comes on the colt of a donkey. The disciples left and did what Jesus had told them to do. They brought the donkey and its colt and laid some clothes on their back. Then Jesus got on. Many people spread clothes in the road, while others put down branches, which they had cut from trees. Some people walked ahead of Jesus, and others followed behind. They were all shouting, Hooray for the Son of David! God bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hooray for God in heaven above. When Jesus came to Jerusalem, everyone in the city was excited and asked, Who can this be? The crowd answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the good news of Jesus Christ.
Would you pray with me? Healer, teacher, risen Christ, we ask, we seek, we knock on your door. Spirit God, living word, ageless wisdom, make us wise. Speak to us in the stirring of our spirits and the beating of our hearts. And give us the language to speak your love in a thousand ways. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Oh, man. My dad used to say that you meet the people you need to meet. Because it's in people that you meet God. In and through people we meet our Creator, the God of love, the God of grace. I got a phone call the other day from a woman named Judy. I hadn't thought about Judy in, in 10 years. 10 years. I didn't realize it had been so long. And it's funny how a phone call can take you back 10 years. And she had bumped into my mother and they came right at the fire hall there, or the, the Legion in the Port Morion. And they have this farmer's, uh, this gathering market and, and, uh, on Saturdays. And she bumped into my mother and she asked my mother... For, for my phone number and she called me and this was last night. Her name was Judy. And it boy, it took me took me back. I hadn't thought about her in a long, long time. I hadn't thought about her brother in a long, long time. And she said, It's been ten years. It's been ten years, Chris. Ten years since her brother went to heaven. brother was an extraordinary man. His name was Sam, Sam Cole. Sam Cole. He was an extraordinary man. A mechanic. He fixed old radios too as a hobby. He had a huge collection of radios. He gave many of his radios away. He loved the Montreal Canadiens. We had that in common. Often he'd be wearing a Canadiens jersey. Sam Cole had ALS, and Lou Gehrig's disease. There was a plaque on the wall in his bedroom. He had had Lou Gehrig's disease for 15 years. It was the longest that anybody had ever had Lou Gehrig's in, in, in Nova Scotia. And when I met him, he was on a respirator. He was on a respirator for many, many years. And he would sit up in the chair with a respirator. And, uh, he had no shirt on. He was so hot. He was hot all the time. And he had this respirator. I'd never seen that before. And, and we'd get together and we'd, we'd pray and we'd talk. And mostly I would read to him. And, and he had this large laminated poster that his mother had. And, and the letters of the alphabet were spaced out. And there were certain words there. And, and he would move with his eyes and he'd, a letter. And I'd say, I... And then, and then he just blinked, and and then we, and he'd spell things out to me. He was, uh, there was nurses around the clock. There was caregivers. The television was on. I think his mother said the television was on for about five years straight. There was people drove by a little place called Donk, and, and the lights were on all the time. And, and when Sam went to heaven, his mother turned the television on. And, and when she went to turn it back on, it, it wouldn't come back on. It, uh, it, was, it was a holy place. His mother Mary was a saint. And, and so his sister Judy called me uh, last night. And, uh, at a, and uh, the market was Saturday. Uh, and I thought about Sam. I thought about how I hold up this car, and after a while he couldn't even move his eyes. And uh, but when I went in, often he would say, and most times he would he would spell out for me, I. He'd look, I, and I'd say I, and he'd blink, and then A, and M, and S, and T. I remember 
his funeral, it was packed. There was people outside. It was, it was just... And this church full of people inspired by this extraordinary man. I shared those words. I said every time we got together, he would spell it, I am still free. I'm still free. And eventually, I know when he couldn't move his eyes, he actually had to tape his eyelids shut. But in his heart, he was still free. I am because we are, and since we are, therefore I am. It's a South African saying, a Zulu word, one word means all that. I am because we are, and since we are, therefore I am. And because we are. Sam was free because of the love of his mother and his sister. Freedom. Today a king comes to town, a prince of peace, riding on a donkey, and the crowd was huge. A palm branch was a symbol of freedom, an act of defiance. I remember seeing a few years ago at the ROM a picture of a coin with Emperor Nero's face on it, and a palm branch was stamped over it. An act of defiance. A palm branch. Seems like such a harmless thing, but the palm branch in the ancient Near East Mediterranean was a symbol of victory, of freedom, a symbol of triumph, of peace, eternal life. An old palm branch was awarded to victorious Olympic athletes in ancient Greece. Not a gold medal, but a palm branch. We see it on cenotaphs. Yesterday I had the pleasure of meeting somebody, one of those people, my dad said, he, you meet the people you need to meet. I met a man named David Edgerton, a cousin, and, and we were talking. He was talking about the, the war memorial downtown. He was talking about the symbols in it. We were he had a Legion jacket on, and this was at a celebration of a wonderful person, uh, Shirley. And so David, we were talking, and, and we were talking about Victory Nichols. We started talking about history. He's a real historian, and he was talking about the Victory Nichols that were printed uh, from 1943 to 45. The Victory Nichol. Well, first he started. He said, "Did you know that Winston Churchill came to Peterborough?" And I said, "No, I didn't know that." And uh, so he's an interesting guy. He's going to come and speak to our men's breakfast. I said, "Would like to come and, and uh, what a wonderful man and." and uh, so he was talking about uh, victory, these victory uh, coins, and he said, he said, you know that there's a secret message on the outside in the rim of these coins, a Morse code message, and the message is, it, it's in Latin, but we win when we work willingly. That's on the edge. It's about being together. Freedom. Imagine there was music that day, and there was a gasp of silence at first, and, and an inhale of the wind of God, and then silence turned to music as people looked around, while well, she's clapping, he's singing, the children are dancing, it's the time of the annual Passover celebration. The city of Jerusalem, the holy city, we heard the beautiful choir sing, is filled to capacity with Jewish pilgrims and tourists who have arrived from all over the Roman Empire, the Roman governor who otherwise resides in Caesarea on the shore of the Mediterranean Sea, comes up to Jerusalem for the occasion every year. He does not make the trip because he's interested in the holy days, but because he is in charge of crowd control. In the past, more than once, the huge gatherings of people have shown their anger and frustration towards Roman occupation. And the boot of Rome came down hard on the necks of God's children. After all, the Passover is the Jewish celebration of liberation from the unjust and cruel domination systems of the Pharaoh. And so he just rode by. And through the crowd and into the temple, as all pilgrims did, and when Jesus arrived, instead of purchasing a suitable animal for the prescribed sacrifice, he physically drove out of the temple the merchants and money changers, who were making a lot of money from the holiday tourist trade,
And he flipped the tables over that got in the way and he said, no more. No more. Where is God? God is here. God doesn't just live in a temple where you have to pay admission to receive forgiveness. He lives in homes with dirt floors. God lives in prodigal sons who are welcomed back. God lives in the ditch by the side of the road when a beaten man is cared for and in the hearts of the weak and merciful and grieving. God is love. Where there is love, there is God. No army, no sword, no chance against Rome. The kingdom of God is at hand. People wanted the army of God to march into the city of power. Instead, they get the peacemaker, a new Moses to lead us to freedom. Jesus emptied himself. As we heard Charlotte read so well, St. Paul said he took the form of a slave and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Jesus Christ, God, that is to say, remarkably, God emptied God's self for us to come as close to us as possible. Dominic Crossan, a historian, describes it this way. When the governor Pilate comes into Jerusalem, he enters the city from the west with an excessive show of military pomp and circumstance. He leads a large group of cavalry and foot soldiers and rides an impressive stallion. He is the highest representative of the imperial power of Rome in the area. If you were in the crowd, you would have likely been standing on the street corner, motionless and silent. You could hear short military commands together with drum beats and the clop clop of horseshoes. Pilate represents the emperor himself, the son of God, lord of all and savior of the world. His entry is all about power. On the east side of town, Jesus and his friends enter the city. Jesus has organized some things in advance. Jesus has planned a demonstration that is as different as it could possibly be from Pilate's demonstration of power on the other side of town. The donkey Jesus rides mocks Pilate's powerful horse. Injustice and inequality, its results of war, poverty, and the destruction of creation. We heard Charlotte read so well that Jesus said to the two of, two of his followers, go into the village in front of you. You'll see a donkey tied there. Release it and bring it here. And if anybody asks you what you're doing, say the Lord needs it. We'll send it back. And so they did. And it was. And so they came with the donkey. They put their coats on the donkey and Jesus sat on it and somebody remembered a prophecy buried 500 years deep in the sacred books of Israel written by Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, a colt of the fowl of a donkey. That's the beginning of the most, a most extraordinary day in the life of Jesus. It was in the spring of the year, about this time. <clears throat> the time for the Jewish Passover, the central festival of all the Jewish people. A festival fueled by memory, one burning, searing memory. The memory of slavery and the deliverance and freedom, liberation from slavery in Egypt. We are still free. They remembered it and what they ate and what they did, what they sang, what they said. In every get together, they remembered it. And now it was very, very important to remember because they were almost enslaved again under the chariot wheels of Rome. Rome knew that, of course, and so every year at Passover they increased about three times the size of the military presence in Jerusalem. The military governor herself. Pontius Pilate came to town in case some real radical decisions needed to be made concerning the citizens. He was going to preserve the peace of Rome, which was preserved as we know, in the only way they knew, by sword and fear. And they were ready. They were ready for the pilgrims. Nervous, I'm sure. Jesus tells us where your treasure is, your heart will also be. 
Jesus' heart was with the children of God, each and every one of us. I read somewhere that our vulnerability is our greatest currency. Our vulnerability is the birthplace of joy. But who wants to be vulnerable, right? 2,000 years ago, a holy man started the long process of changing humanity's idea of itself. His name literally means God heals, Jesus. And God's children were in need of healing, saving from a misunderstanding of who God is and who they are. His words would enter humanity's soul, blessed are the meek, love your enemy, turn the other cheek, the prodigal son comes home, they need not go away, you give them something to eat. Whoever welcomes a little child welcomes me. Whatever you do for the least of these, my children, you do for me. Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. I will be with you to the very end of time. And it is in the love of Christ that we live. We are called like the people in the crowd that day, and as stewards of God's vineyard by acts of love to prepare a way for him to touch human hearts and plant seeds of hope. <coughs> we know where this parade leads us. It leads to the cross. Why the cross? C.S. Lewis said that the cross is to sit for a few minutes in the lap of God who hurts because you hurt. I think this is what he meant when he said to love at all is to be vulnerable. Palm Sunday, Holy Week, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, these holiest of weeks in which Jesus suffers and dies is God giving God's own heart to the world, to you and me and every one of us. We're still free. We too have a story to tell, a march to make, good news to be, a mission and a calling, <coughs> to be the meek who inherit the earth. Glory be to God. Amen and amen. I invite you to lift up your voices and join in singing all glory, laud, and honor. <coughs>
amazing God, mercy is your name. You are the great love that moves mountains. Jesus who walked on water and calmed the raging sea, God who leads us beside still waters and gives us new strength. You love us. You are our maker. You know us. You dance in and out of our footsteps. Your hope, O oh God, endures. Our faith prevails. Your vision of peace remains. In a world filled with violence and war, we gather together to hear again your promise of peace. Love is who you are, O oh God. Love is how you have met us in Christ. Love is how you call us to be the church. <coughs> Nearer are you than breathing, closer than hands and feet. Ours are the eyes with which you in the mystery look out in compassion on the world. Creating God, your love is the color that ripples through all that is made. Your wisdom gives balance to life. May we be your life-giving prayer, your living prayer, to live in partnership with creation, <coughs> blessing it, loving it, sharing it wisely. <coughs> and may we find time enough to gaze at the heavens and silence enough to wonder at the hand <coughs> of love. Wind of God, breath of life, nourish the potential in us all. Whisper your tender words of healing in the ears of the sick. Breathe your spirit of comfort around those who mourn. Stir hearts hardened by despair to new life and hope. For we make our prayer to the one who opens the doors, Jesus the wise one, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. So into your care, O God, we place from the silence within us, or spoken aloud, all those whom we love. Awaken for them your presence in the very storm. May the anxieties of the day leave them. May the fear of the night leave them. May your closeness leave them knowing how loved they are. God of overflowing grace, mysterious and encouraging, you have a mission for this place. Teach us to travel where the Spirit leads us. Teach us to welcome those Christ sends to meet us. Help us to embrace the opportunities we are given. Help us to make space for one another. Living God, draw together all our prayers, silent and spoken, as we show our trust in your love by joining all your church in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, <coughs> who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. getting tired of the sadness and the destruction, um, the deaths and everything in our world today. So I have some good news for you, and I hope you'll be happy about this. 
At Westdale's March board meeting, sponsorship of a refugee family was approved. This will be a combined effort with Greenwood, Northminster, and Mark Street United Churches. This sponsorship will be part of the United Church of Canada's quota for 2023. The photo on the screen shows the family that we will help sponsor. Muhammad El Yusuf, his wife Sarin, and their son Bera. Muhammad's parents already live in Peterborough, along with Muhammad's four siblings. I will read to you the story of the El Yusuf family so you can get started knowing them. The suffering of displacement of the El Yusuf family began at the beginning of the war in 2011 when the eldest son, Mohammed, left for Lebanon. Except for Muhammad, the rest of the family, parents and four siblings as mentioned, left Syria in 2012 when their town was bombed. The youngest son, Mutasim, received a head injury which has left him paralyzed on one side. After spending five years in a refugee camp in Turkey, where Haldun, the father, was principal of the camp school, the parents and the four siblings came to Peterborough as government-sponsored refugees. Mohammed, the eldest son, who was in Lebanon with his family, was sponsored by the Living Hope Congregation and arrived in Peterborough three years ago. As mentioned, the current sponsorship is for the remaining son, Muhammad, his wife, Siren, and their seven-year-old son, Bera, who are financially dependent on their family in Canada. The emotional burden of the family members left behind weighs very heavily on the whole family. Family reunification is supported by government refugee policy. The outreach committee will continue to update our church family about the life of this young family and the goings on in our church and the other United Churches involved in regards to fundraisers. Soon, we will have our first fundraiser to raise funds for the financial support of the sponsorship. So you can look forward to this. Janice will be posting the information that I have just read on our bulletin board today, so you can now have another look at it. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. Every good thing is a gift from God. Each one of you are a gift from God. The gift of your life is a source of blessing in this world. So let us glorify God through the gifts of our time and our talent and our treasure. The work of Christ church right here in Peterborough and through the Mission and Service Fund around the world. <clears throat>
uh, 10.30, and I'm really happy this year at Emmanuel United is coming over to Westdale here, and, and they're going to join us. So Reverend Lyle Horn and I have put together a, a service for us, a hot cross buns after the service as well. So, And, and we're asking the folks to bring toothpaste and toothbrushes if you're able, and, and place them in the, the shopping cart there on a Good Friday. That's for one roof and uh, the book club. So Kim leads a wonderful book club here. Um, so the next meeting is April 28th there at 1 p.m. And uh, yeah, so you can see the book there, Electric City Singer. So that's coming up uh, Sunday, April the 16th. Uh, that was wonderful last year. And, and so uh, that's a church uh, after uh, 3 p.m. on that Sunday. So that's a Sunday after uh, Easter. Thoughts from Dennis Trudell again. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It is me again. And uh, what is your Westdale clown going to talk about this morning? Well, what I'm not going to talk about is what I spoke about about two months ago, where we had our Valentine's spaghetti music themed dinner and how our numbers were pretty low. And I challenged the congregation, and the congregation rallied behind that dinner, and it was a huge success, so thank you for that. I'm also not going to talk about what I talked about two weeks ago with respect to Funscript and the Westdale gift card program. I will tell you that there was a huge surge in orders, and people are rallying behind that. And that is a program that uh, essentially, instead of using your credit card or cash, pay for things like groceries, and gasoline and going to the movies or whatever that you use your Westdale gift card and every gift card that is uh, purchased through Westdale a percentage between 2 and 10 percent goes to the church so it's a really easy way to generate a lot of funds for the church but I'm not, I'm not, gonna, I'm not here to talk about that either. <laughs> I'm actually here to talk about three letters GST and when you think about GST, I'm sure most of you are thinking goods and services tax. Ooh, we don't like tax. But I'm not here to talk about that. I'm actually here to talk about this program right here. Westdale Goods, Services, and Talents. Goods, Services, and Talents. So I'm just going to walk through a bunch of questions. What, how, when, where, and why. So next slide, just on a high level. What is it? As mentioned, it is goods, services, and talents, GST. How does it all work? At a high level, essentially it's a silent option. The congregation is going to donate your goods, services, and or talents, and the congregation is going to bid on those GST items. So when is this all going to take place? Basically, this month is where we're hoping everybody's going to rally behind and think about some of the good services and talents that you guys can offer. Everybody has them. So then what will happen starting in May, we'll have a huge board, a bunch of boards out in the narthex, out the back of the church there, the front of the church, and people will basically sign their name and what they're willing to bid. It's silent auction, so there'll be increments, the next person will cross the previous person's name out, put their name, and their bid. Where is it going to take place? Essentially, wherever it makes sense, depending on the, the good service or talents that we coordinate between the donator and the highest bidder. And why are we doing this? Really, I guess two reasons. One, networking and fundraising. I think it's an easy way to generate a lot of revenue for the church. <coughs> okay. Previous, uh, so let me just say that uh, I was thinking about something that I shouldn't, shouldn't uh, basically pinpoint anybody, but I am going to diverge from that. So Ross and Kathy Fitchett, I have a few questions for you guys, and I'm looking for a yes or no response. So first question, I understand you own a Mustang convertible, is that true? And what if you fair to say that you like to drive a Mustang convertible? And do you like ice cream? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Peter Smith, I understand you like to play golf, is that true? Yes. And you're a member of Cortha? Yes. And would it be fair to say it's a lot more fun playing golf with somebody else as opposed to playing golf by yourself? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you got three yeses there as well. Okay, so 
so what? Some of the examples, and this is just a simple list came to my mind. Bake a pie, cake, or muffins. I think everybody can do that. Make a lasagna or host a lunch or dinner at your house. Join me for a cruise in my Mustang convertible. <laughs> Get ice cream at Fourth and Dairy in Bob Cajun. <laughs> Join me for a round of golf at Corta. These are just ideas. Join me to go see the Blue Jays in Toronto. Spend an afternoon enjoying my pool, my cottage, or my boat. Join me for a picnic, or a barbecue, or for lunch. Supply a few hours of labor to do gardening. That's one of the things that I'm going to be contributing. Join me to go fishing on Rice Lake. Rudy. Wash, wax, and vacuum the vehicle. <laughs> Tailing a car. Provide handyman, handy women, services, plumbing, wiring, fix it stuff, sewing, whatever. House watching, dot sitting while you're going to be away. And perhaps re gift a gift you received but aren't using. A couple examples a frame picture, I don't know, some wine. Be creative. We all have goods and services and talents. Everybody has them. Alright, how and when. So, you're going to fill out at least one, hopefully everybody, a GST donation form. Bake a pie, walk through all those examples just before, with a suggested minimum of price, what you feel your item is worth. And then in May, and starting next week, all donations can be viewed in front of the church, and you're going to bet on them. The deadline is the end of May, the last Sunday in May. And then every week you can look at what has been donated and you can do your sign up auction thing. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of exciting times. And it's a great way to meet other folks in the church. Okay, where? So donations forms are going to be available in the Narthex. I don't think we're doing it this Sunday. We'll have them ready for next Sunday. So your little homework is to think about kinds of goods, services, and talents that you'd like to offer as a donation to the church. And then the actual GST event is going to take place as arranged by the donator and the successful bidder. Probably this summer, quite honestly. So why are we doing this? Again, social and networking and have some fun. It's an excellent way to support the church. And two weeks ago I mentioned, let's try to fundraise smarter, not harder. So this is a really easy way to generate a lot of funds Get to know your fellow West Aliens and have a good time with it. So in summary, good services, good services and talents, we all have them. Good services and talents, we all want them. Good services and talents, we all need them. So what a great way to support our church. And my question to you is, will you rally behind this initiative like you did the last two? I think the answer is yes. In summary, the events team is kind of leading this, but uh, definitely the giving team are interested in this as well. And thank you everybody at Westdale, and go Westdale go. Alright, have a little cheer. Go Westdale go. Go Westdale go. Go Westdale go. Go Westdale go. One more time with Felix. Go Westdale go.
Last night was a bit of a special night. They're on the table. Oh, are they? Well, they're there for today. Pardon me. We've, we've made arrangements to bring those goodies forward, and you can enjoy them uh, with your coffee today. And thank you, Warren. Um, the word is getting out about uh, Euchre at West End. We had people fly in from California to play. <laughs> Specifically to play cards. <laughs> and that's because mom, Ellen Goff, said, it's my birthday and I want to play cards at West End. So Brenda, could we, uh, could we have a round of happy birthday for Ellen Goff? Yeah. Huh? Joan Dewar's birthday. Joan Dewar's birthday too? Same day. Same day. Well, Joan, we missed you last night. Oh, she Okay, so let's have a round of happy birthday for Ellen and Joan. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you.
the Creator, glory to the Christ, glory to the Spirit. Gathered and scattered friends of Jesus, people of heart and spirit, go forth in peace to share God's love. You are ambassadors for Christ. So may your love of life fill your heart. And may your love of earth bring joy to heaven. May your love of neighbor heal the world. Go to live as the body of Christ, resurrected by love and empowered by spirit to continue Christ's work in this world. Go and live generously, trusting that God's love will never run out. And may you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet. And may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you. Thank you. 